Okay, welcome, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be discussing every tip a newbie lifter should know. Like everyone, I was once a beginner in the gym, not having a clue what I was doing. But now I feel like I've got a little bit of knowledge that I can share to those who have just started lifting to get them to that next step in their performance. So starting off, number one, arguably one of the most important factors of lifting is hydration. You wanna make sure that you're drinking enough water throughout the day. Two to three liters, they say. I think as long as you're peeing like every two hours, you should be good on the hydration scale. Staying hydrated will ensure that your body basically just functioning correctly. Like everything will be working nice and smoothly. Very, very, very dehydrated. Also ensure you get a nice pump. So when you're in the gym, you're feeling good about yourself because your muscles get nice filled with blood and all of that good stuff. Number two, protein intake. Okay, you wanna be eating 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. I got you guys a protein shake. Awesome, I love protein. I know you love protein, I love protein too. Yeah, protein rocks. Are you guys talking about protein? I love protein. I love protein too. We know you love protein. Protein rocks. Awesome, protein rocks. Protein. 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 Number three is sleep. Sleep is super important because it allows you to recover. When you sleep, growth hormone is released, which helps with growth. Who would have guessed? I know, but it's super important. You should just aim for at least eight hours of sleep. Also, make sure you have good like, sleep hygiene. So this is like turning your phone off an hour before bed, doing some reading, doing some meditation, doing all these things to help relax you, calm your mind, so you are ready to sleep when it is time to sleep. Another thing I'd recommend on top of that is as soon as your alarm goes off in the morning. You want to make sure that you're getting out of bed straight away. Turn that alarm off and getting ready for your day. Ensure that you got good discipline. I'm saying ensure a lot. It will ensure that you got good discipline and will just like contribute to things later on in the day. If you tell yourself, oh, I'm going to do this thing, there's a higher chance that you're going to do it because you've got that discipline from getting up straight away in the morning. Because it is arguably one of the hardest things to do. Number four is stretching or using a massage gun every single day. If you're training five times a week, you still want to make sure that you're stretching, using a massage gun, anything to relieve the tension from your muscles so they are ready to train the next session. If you don't stretch, if you don't use a massage, if you don't do anything, all that's gonna happen is you'll get loads of knots in your muscles, it's gonna be super tight, you're gonna lose strength. There's a higher risk of injury, which you do not want. You wanna make the most of your newbie gains, so just make sure you're doing everything the best you can to optimize the gains. Number five is practicing form. When you go into the gym, on the machines, you will see that they start at a small weight. There is a reason that they start at a small weight. That is because for beginners, you should be using a pretty low weight. I'm not saying use the first one because that could just be too light for you, but you want to use the lowest weight where you control the weight, where you can feel your muscles contracting. You want to be going, so you have the eccentric and concentric movements, okay? The concentric is the muscle lengthening and the eccentric is the muscle shortening. I really hope I've got that right. If I haven't, I will correct myself in editing. But for example, when you are doing a chest press, just gonna use that example, that's what I did today. On the concentric, you wanna go nice and like not too quick, but like a relatively fast pace. It's still controlled when you're pushing the weight out. And on the eccentric, you want to go nice and slow. What this is going to do is going to help form my muscle connection. And you're also stronger on the eccentric portion of the movement. So by doing this, you're going to get more micro tears in your muscles to allow for more gains. Also, by practicing your form, you are going to be a lot less likely of injury. 
watch videos on how to do form, film yourself doing the exercises. You can go up to a biggest guy in the gym and be like, yo dude, can you just check my form? Give me some pointers, okay? I know that's scary, but by putting yourself in uncomfortable positions, you will grow as a human being. So just give it a shot, why not? Number six is training hard and consistently, okay? You wanna make sure both things go hand in hand. So when you're in the gym, you're normally doing like 10 sets of 10 reps on every single exercise you're doing. Do like two to three sets maximum on each exercise. Three exercises per muscle group. When I say sets, by the way, I mean like working sets. So like top weight of the exercise. Not like your warm-up sets. I do recommend doing a warm-up set just to make sure that you've got the night, you've got the contraction going, you're not like hurting from anything. Just to like reduce chance of injury, going back to it again. Reduce chance of injury during those working sets. You want to be pushing yourself as hard as possible. You want to go to as close to failure as you can. Just enjoy it, just enjoy it. Okay, point number seven is do at least an hour of cardio a week. This doesn't matter if you're bulking, cutting, whatever. Just do an hour of cardio. It's not that difficult to get in. No, don't do it. I'm a virgin. You can split it up between seven days. That's less than 10 minutes a day. Just like, just get it done. Your heart is the most important muscle to make sure you're training. Point number eight is your diet. So you can go for a few different approaches depending on what you like. The one that I'd say is most popular is the 80-20 diet or the 90-10 diet. This is essentially where you eat 80% of your foods like clean. So things that are grown, they're not made in the factory essentially, okay? So 80% of your diet is that. Then 20% or 10%, whatever, is just whatever you want it to be. Obviously, if you're doing this and you're still putting on a load of weight that you don't want to have, it's just fat, cut back a little bit on the 20% and then hopefully you'll see some some progress in the losing of the fat. Just quickly gonna touch on counting calories. So personally I counted calories for about a year. I think it's an awesome tool to use because it allows you to understand how many calories in certain things and it can be beneficial in that sense of you know what to eat and you're not just guessing. Although it can get extremely addictive because you you're constantly just thinking like oh I've only got this many calories left in the day, or I'm not gonna eat right now because I'll be hungry later, so I'll starve myself in this few hours. That's where it can get dodgy. But saying that, it is all personal choice. Point number 10 is like a mental health aspect, okay? Mental health is super important to me. I'm sure everyone watching this video knows of someone suffering from mental health or does so themselves. So this is why I wanted to do a little section on this because it can contribute to your overall stress, which in turn creates cortisol, which is the stress hormone, and can negatively affect your progress within the gym. First thing, stop mindlessly scrolling on social media for hours and hours at a time. Set yourself a limit. Personally, on my phone, I've got my screen time on my homepage, so I know exactly how much time I'm spending on my phone. It can seriously affect your mental health because your dopamine receptors just get destroyed essentially okay so find things that you enjoy to do write them down and when you find yourself just scrolling just take a look at the list and be like oh let's go for a walk let's go to the gym Let, let's do anything let's do some yoga meditation reading so many things i can think of would personally help me but i'm sure you've got your own list of things one of the biggest things is having a goal in mind having a purpose in life is super important for your mental health. Whether it's a goal within the gym or a goal outside the gym, absolutely anything, put steps in place to get to that goal and maybe put a time scale on it because that can make it more realistic and you're working towards something which has an end date. That's good motivation, but that's also where discipline comes in because discipline is gonna keep you locked in. Motivation is only temporary. Last thing on this mental health subcategory is supplements to help with anxiety and stress. Personally, I take ashwagandha, which is a plant extract, which can help reduce cortisol, reduce stress, helps anxiety, just calms you down generally. And I would say improves confidence a little bit. But yeah, give it a shot, see if it works for you. So those are like the main nine points for beginners in the gym. Now I've got some like extra points that I'm gonna add in, which 
should apply, but you don't necessarily need to apply. First thing on the extra list is creatine. I'm sure you've all heard of creatine by now. If you haven't, then here you are. Here, I'm talking to you about creatine. Creatine is the most studied supplement out there for like gym stuff. Creatine draws more water into your muscles, which can make you appear fuller. So when you first start taking creatine, the scale is gonna go up a little bit, but don't worry. Having more mass can allow you to lose more weight. It also helps with your power output and helps with muscle fatigue. Second thing is pre-workout. Pre-workout is not necessary by any means, but it can definitely help improve your workouts. You can get stim pre-workout or non-stim pre-workout. A stim is a stimulant, so it's like caffeine, which gives you energy, which can wake you up from a very tired state to allow you to push your workout. But be careful with this. Don't take it six hours before bed because you'll have trouble sleeping. Third thing, is continue educating yourself, okay? There are so many reliable people out there. I'll put loads of them in the description for you to definitely check out and just learn from them because they're super knowledgeable. They've been in the field for a long time. They know what they're talking about and they give out so much good free information which can expand your mind, improve your training. Fourth thing is affirmations. You don't have to believe in them, okay? Obviously, it is hard to like, justify that they are a real thing. You can say things and they come true, but I'm telling you, mm, they work. A big thing in the whole fitness industry is body dysmorphia. This is where you look in the mirror for training for a long time and you don't see any progress in yourself. Or you see a distorted view of yourself, which causes you to be upset with the way you look. This is why I suggest taking progress pictures. You can look back on your results and be like, oh look, I've actually gained a lot of muscle or I've lost a lot of fat or both, you know? But by looking in the mirror each morning, telling yourself that you love your body and you're gonna have an amazing day with true belief will absolutely change your life. I'd say repeat it three to five times every day and just watch the magic happen, okay? You've got to believe it though, okay? You've got to believe it. That is the video wrapped up. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button subscribe, comment down below if you've got any questions about anything, any videos you want to see, let me know. I will definitely take them into consideration and we'll see what you can do, okay? Peace out, enjoy your day, have an amazing night, evening, whatever.